Uh, thank you, merci, Alan. Alan um, good morning, bonjour à tous et à toutes. Je suis très heureux d'être ici avec vous. I'm really pleased to be here this morning. Um, I'm glad to see there's still people in the room with all the weather. I know people want to get home. Uh, I tell you, I have a place up at Manulife. I think I could have walked down the middle of the street to get here and not been hit by a car. It's a bit like a ghost town out there right now. So um, no jokes about Toronto and the weather. I do see my colleague Mitzi Hunter, uh, who's here, MPP for Scarborough Guildwood. Uh, I know that uh, uh, my colleagues Michael Coteau and Marie-France Lalonde are going to be here. They're in that traveling kind of glitch. And I know Michael Gravel wanted to be here as well too, but couldn't be here. But Larry Joy is here on his behalf. I also see my, my, my colleague, uh, Bill Morrow, way at the back of the room. And uh, I've never had a chance to congratulate him on being elected mayor of Thunder Bay. And I want to say congratulations. Uh, you're going to do a great job. And I love working with you. And I won't continue on with the introductions other than to say my friend Eli Elshantiri from Ottawa is here. And as you know, Ottawa is a very big city and has a very big rural component. So it's a, a bit of a complex challenge for councillors uh, and the municipal leadership in the city. Uh, one I think that they've met, uh, but it's still a challenge for them. So um, about 50% of my caucus is here, which is uh, something I'm very proud of. <laughs> and. Uh, well, I have the highest percentage of francophones, most women, um, most diversity of any caucus. So in, um, back in the fall in the legislature, Premier Ford, in responding to a question to me, said, you're the leader of the minivan party. I, I, was, I was outraged. I couldn't believe that he said it. I had a supplementary. I had to respond in some sort of way. That's not true. So I told him, I'm the interim leader of the minivan party. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I own that. And I own that because families drive minivans. And because we built the minivan, the birthplaces in Windsor. So I'm proud of that. The minivan is the workhorse of Ontario's families and Ontario's businesses and has been that for decades. So I'm proud to hold that moniker and will always stand up for the minivan. <laughs> so in that thread, the voters sent us a message. We heard that message. And I can guarantee you we're working very hard very hard to earn their trust again. And I know there's elected officials out here, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we'll have a leadership race later in the next year or so. That'll be an, an excellent opportunity for an across Ontario campaign by candidates to talk to everybody across the province. Because we're a big province. And I look forward to that, and I'm very proud of the work that our small caucus does to talk about the things that are important to families. Now, I want to congratulate all the elected officials here on their election. It's tough. You've taken on a job, some of you are re-elected, some of you elected, and you've taken on a job that says, I'm here to build up my community. And that's really important because it's a tough game. We know that. And it's important that you're doing the work that you're doing in your communities and doing the work that you're doing here to make your communities better, to build them up. So I'm not here to, I'm not going to rail against the government. You're going to have to build your relationship with the new government, just like you had to build with our government, and you have to build it with the government after that. And you'll have to work with what you've got, but the most important thing is to build that relationship. I do want to talk to you about a couple of things that I think are really important. I think they've been brought up a few times in the conference, and I know there's many, many things that concern you about your relationship with the province and your needs from the province. First, I want to tell you a story. 
In September of this year, my mother was out shopping with my sister. They finished shopping, she left her on a bench, brought the car over, my mom's 87. Mom wasn't moving. Mom had a stroke. So they called, the paramedics came, they got her to hospital, she ended up in surgery. She was in uh, the ICU for about a week. And many of you had have had experiences like this. They're similar to that, maybe not an emergency. But the only thing that matters to you when something like this happens is that space where that person's at. It's that bed. When someone's sick or you're sick, it's the only thing that matters. What kind of car you own doesn't matter. What kind of house you live in doesn't matter. How much your taxes are don't matter. What your salary is, what you do for a living. Nothing else matters. And I know, my, mom's, my mom is doing well. She's at home and we're helping her out. There's still struggles. There always are struggles with the healthcare system. It needs constant work. It's why I came in to elected office and working in politics because I believe that our healthcare system is the thing that keeps us strong. And I know in your communities that people look to you for healthcare. More so in a, in a rural municipality, they look to you. You're elected. You need to have the answers. You need to advocate. You need to make sure that that thing, even though it's not your responsibility, you need to make sure or do whatever you can for that thing that they need when they need it most. So, and I have seen the conversations around the concerns about public health and what will happen with that. Those are very valid concerns. The government is proposing, at least by reports, very significant change in health care. And there's a risk there that the things that are important to your communities might get lost. You know, bigger is not always better. And I'm not here to defend the Lynns. Experience with them, some people are, are not very good, other people it's good. But the principles of making sure that local matters, that local decision making, that local leadership, that local capacity is there, matters. And that's something I want to guarantee you, I'm going to keep my eye on. In the last government, I was the PA to health, and my mandate was palliative and end-of-life care. So I saw how many, many rural communities wanted to build hospices, built hospices, did incredible things, some things that urban communities couldn't do. And that was because of the local component. People had figured out they, it was a community-based activity, and they came together and they built a place for each other at the end of their lives. So going forward, we don't know what those changes are going to be. They look like they're going to be significant. And um, I want you to know that we're going to fight to make sure that those things are there. They're important to all our families. And as I said earlier, when someone's sick, when someone's in need of care, that's the only thing that matters. And the other thing that I want to mention, thank you. We've seen some changes in education. That's another thing our families count on. All our families, whether you live in downtown Toronto, or in Wawa, or in Thunder Bay, or in Ottawa. It's what creates opportunity. And we have to make sure that people who work hard have access to post-secondary education and training, because that's what gives them opportunity. The government is going in the wrong direction on that. It's taken 10% off, but also created a burden on families, especially low and middle income families, that are going to prevent people from having that opportunity. And we do that not just to be nice and good and isn't it the right thing to do? It's just the smart thing to do. 
That's what builds up our economies. The world's changing. Access to high-speed internet are going to make, you know, when we get there, and I know many of you are still working hard on broadband, will enable communities to thrive. But you need educated people. You need people who are trained. And so I want you to know that our party will continue to fight for that principle. And again, I want to make the commitment to you that we're going to work hard. We're going to work hard to earn people's trust again. Those two things are too important for all of us. And I know you know that because you're leaders in your community and people even talk to you about education. So I want to end it at that. I want to thank you for your service to your communities. I want to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity uh, for speaking this morning. Uh, merci et bonne journée.